Tena wapendwa na wasalimu katika jina la Bwana Yesu Kristo kwa neema ya Bwana Mungu ametupa nafasi ingine ya kuja katika uh, mitambo ili tukaweze kuwa na ushirika siku yetu ya leo ya Jumapili. Mungu akabariki na shukuru Bwana kwa sababu angali ni mridaji wetu, angali ni wakofu wetu, angali ndiyo kiongozi wetu. Mungu atatusaidia na mambo haya ambayo yanakuba ulimwengu katika siku ya leo yataweza tu kutuondokea. Basi hebu tukaombe kwa ajili ya kusoma neno la Bwana. Baba wetu wa mbinguni katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Tunakuja mbele ya uwepo wako. asubuhi jema. Tukitaka Mungu wa rehema kuwa na ushirika na wewe na tukikuuliza Bwana utukumbuke siku ya leo kwa sababu tunakuhitaji. Bwana wetu wa mbinguni mwanadamu kama vile ulivyosema yeye peke yake pasipo kuwa na wewe ameshindwa kabisa na kila kitu ni kama vile ulisema ya kwamba wewe ni mzabibu na si tumatawi na tawi haliwezi lolote bila kuwa katika mti basi sisi nasi tusipokuwa na wewe bwana hatuwezi jambo lolote na kwa hivyo katika kila jambo tunakuhitaji bwana wetu wa mbinguni hivyo bwana Tunakushukuru kwa ajili Bwana <coughs> paka mahali ambapo tumefika imechukua mkono wako wa uridaji na imekuwa neema yako na imekuwa Bwana wetu wa mbinguni ah huruma zako za kuhifadhi afya yetu na mili yetu na roho zetu na nafsi zetu na wokofu na ukombozi ambao umetupea Bwana wetu wa mbinguni Paulo aliuliza ni kitu gani ambacho chaweza kutitoa mikononi ya upendo wa Bwana Hamuna alisema si viki si masaibu si ugonjwa ha si jaa si tauni hakuna kitu ambacho chaweza kututoa katika mikono ya upendo wa Bwana na kwa hivyo Bwana tunashukuru ya kwamba kuwa pamoja nasi umekuwa Bwana wa baraka kwetu na umekuwa Mungu wabaye ni msaada wa karibu wakati wote kila ndugu kila dada anapohitaji umekuwa Bwana ya kwamba tukilitia katika jina lako kwa haraka Bwana unakuja kutukoa kutuokoa kutukomboa na kutusaidia. Na kwa hivyo Bwana tunafurahia kuwa na rafiki kama wewe. Sio tu rafiki ila Mungu wetu na baba wetu. Tunakushukuru na kusema ni asanti kwa kuwa na Mungu kama wewe. Basi Bwana siku ya leo tunapokuja katika meza yako, tusamehe dhambi zetu na makosa yetu ili tukubarike na wewe. Bwana wetu wa mbinguni na ili tukaweze kuwa na ushirika na wewe na tukabarikiwe na wewe. Naomba Bwana Ewe uwezae kuona mawazo na mioyo ya watu unajua mahitaji ya watu hawa. Baba wetu wa mbinguni ukawabariki kila mtu kulingana na imani yake. Bwana wape haja za mioyo yao na haja za roho zao. Nijalie tena Bwana tunapoenda kulisoma neno lako ya kwamba kinywa changu nimekiweka wakfu kwa ajili Bwana wetu wa mbinguni ya wewe ukakitumie ukanene neno lako ambalo litaweza kuwa na baraka kwa watu wako siku ya leo. Bwana wetu wa mbinguni na jiondoa katika njia nami na nitakuwa tu nimekaa chini kama hawa ambao wanasikiza nikiomba roho wako mtakatifu akaweze kuchukua nguvu na mamlaka sasa na kulifundisha neno lake na kuweze kuhudumu neno lake kuligana na mpango wake wa siku ya leo ndio maombi yetu bariki usomaji na usikifu wa neno lako na Bwana wetu wa mbinguni ukawe na uhuru wa kuhudumia nafsi za watu wako kwa sababu wanakutegea sikio wanataka kukuona wanataka kukusikia na wanataka kuwa na ushirika na wewe. Nijalie jambo hilo ndio maombi yetu katika jina la Bwana Yesu Kristo tunaomba na kuamini. And the church say amen. So God bless you brethren. Uh, nataka tukaweze kusoma maandiko katika kitabu cha Petro wa kwanza, mlango wa kwanza na ule mstari wa tatu Hapo ndipo tutatoa somo letu la siku ya leo. Uh, let us open our Bibles in the book of 1st Peter and, uh, and verse 23 chapter 1 and verse 23 1st Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 Aba swahili Bible here that say uh, kwa kuwa mumezaliwa mara ya pili si kwa mbegu iharibikayo bali kwa ile isiyoharibika kwa neno la Mungu lenye uzima bidumilo hata milele Unaona kwa kuwa mumezaliwa mara ya pili si kwa mbegu iharibikayo bali kwa ile isiyoharibika kwa neno la Mungu lenye uzima lidumalo hata milele Bwana abariki usomaji
maneno lake basi wapendwa tumekuwa tukiongea kuhusu uh, kuzaliwa mara ya pili kwa sababu hatuna budi kuzaliwa mara ya pili we must be born again na eh, tumeona kwa sababu ya kuwa na wapendwa wengi katika makanisa ni mwetu ambao hawajazaliwa mara ya pili eh, basi tunaona ya kwamba tunakuwa na watu ambao Aa, <coughs> tunakuwa na watu ambao wako makanisani mwetu kwa siku nyingi pasipo ujuzi huu wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili Aa, na na, na kujaza na roho mtakatifu unaona basi wapendwa kama wale tuliona kama vile tumevikuwa tukijifundisha ya kwamba hawawezi kuishia Aa, neno la Mungu na hawawezi kuwa wakristo wa kweli ambao wanaweza ku, eh, kuishi maisha ya kweli ya Kikristo tuliona hivyo na kwa hivyo dugu dada ukiwa hapo uki, ukiwa hapo una umekuwa mtu ambaye amelemewa kabisa kumuishia Mungu katika neno lake la siku ya leo basi umewaza umeanza kujua ya kwamba shida yako ambayo inakuzuia wewe kumuishia Mungu wewe kuishia neno la Bwana na kulitii ni kwa sababu haujawahi kubadilishiwa asili ya dhambi uliyozaliwa nayo na wazazi wako <coughs> na kupata asili mpya ambao ni Kristo kuzaliwa katika maisha yako kwa sababu maisha yako yanabadilika tu wakati ambapo unapata ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na kupata asili mpya ambayo ndiyo katika hiyo asili mpya unaweza kumuizia kumuishia Mungu katika neno lake na kwa hivyo tuo, tumeona isipokuwa mtu azaliwe mara ya pili na ajaze na Roho Mtakatifu basi hawezi uh, hawezi kufanya nini hawezi kumuishia Mungu hawezi kuishi uh, kuligana na kanuni ya neno la Mungu that is why we are insisting uh, that we must all be born again we must all receive the experience of the new birth and Christ uh, be born in our souls so that we can be able to live a true Christian life because without this experience of the new birth and of the baptism of the holy ghost uh, there is no way we can be able to live a true christian life now today i want to to talk about the true experience of the new birth and the baptism and of the holy ghost siku ya leo nataka kuongea kuhusu ujuzi wa kweli wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na ubatizo wa roho mtakatifu kwa sababu tunajua kitu kimoja ya kwamba kwa sababu ya wapendwa wengi uh, kukosa kujua ujuzi wa kweli wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na kujaza na mtakatifu wahaminio wengi wameishi kushikilia vituko ambavyo si za kweli ambazo haziandamani na Mungu na neno lake na hazikutokana na Mungu ama wengine wajui waiendee jambo hili namna gani kuhusu kuzaliwa mara ya pili na ujazo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Hivyo inatupaza kwa neema ya Mungu kuelezea kulingana na vile Biblia inavyoonyesha na vile ilivyotafsiriwa na nabii wetu kuangalia ni vipi mtu anaweza kuwa na uhakika ya kwamba amepata ujuzi wa kweli wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na kujazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. That's the reason why we are talking we are having such a subject why uh, the, the true experience of the new birth and of the holy ghost so that everyone uh, who, who has uh, this experience can cross check whether he has a true experience of the new birth and of the holy ghost and those who are looking for this experience of the new birth and the baptism of the holy ghost uh, now they are able to know how they are going to uh, look uh, and approach this experience so god it bless you brethren but the thing i wanted you to know and to remind you that unless you are born again and that sinful nature uh, of sin is killed in a man by the new birth and you know the prophet told us last time it is it is a death and a birth that old sinful nature dies that is the death and a new nature is born that is the new birth uh, so that now you can uh, have the true experience of the new birth it's a death and a birth it's a change of your nature from your old sinful nature that you were born with by your parents to a new spiritual nature that you are born from your new parent Jesus Christ the Word 
and then you are a new creature. So the prophet said here in the message, it was not so from the beginning, which was preached in 1963, paragraph 47. Every man got to be born again. And this sinful nature killed in him, and a new man born in him, which is Christ Jesus, the Son of God. Then you surrender yourself completely to Christ, and Christ comes in and writes a book of Acts through you. And now, how I know that the truth, my friend, how I know it is the truth I've said, if you can only yield yourself, uh, if you can only yield yourself. Unaona, na bia nasema katika ujumbe huu, ya kuamba kila mtu, lazima akaweze kuzaliwa mare ya pili. Na asili yake, ya dhambi, ikaweze kuuliwa, you see, the death of that old sinful nature, the new birth, the true experience of the new birth, consists of a death and a birth. You, the old sinful nature must die. And you must have a new nature. You must have a new nature. How did you receive this uh, sinful nature? By your first parent, you were born in a sinful nature. Because we come with a nature in, uh, 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 that look like uh, that of our parents. And for you to have a new nature, you need to have a new parent which is going to give you this uh, new nature. And that is Christ Jesus Christ. You remember the prophet was saying, because of birth, uh, talking about his first birth, which he received from Charles and Ella Branham, he was born a sinner. But when he was born again through the word of God, he received a new nature through Christ, who became his new parent. You remember that? So, the, the prophet here is saying, every man got to be born again, and his sinful nature killed in him, and a new, a new man born in him, which is Christ Jesus the son of God. The prophet is saying here, ya kuamba, kila mtu lazima azaliwe mare ya pili, na asiri ile ya dhambi ikaweze kufa, na ikifa, akaweze kuzaliwa na asiri mupia, akaweze kuzaliwa tena, katika asiri mupia, basi, akizaliwa katika asiri hiyo mupia, ambayo ni asiri ya Yesu Christo dani yake. Why do you receive the, 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 the nature of Christ? How? And, and how? Because, listen to this by brethren, by your first natural birth, you come like your parents. You have a, a nature like that of your parents. We have seen that. We have seen Brother Branham talking about his natural birth. He said his nature uh, came from his uh, family tree. So likely, uh, uh, always, we inherit the nature of our parents and of our, of our family tree. And if we get a new birth that comes from Jesus Christ, then we must got, get a new nature. And that old sinful nature uh, must die in order for us to get a new nature from the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. That is the only true experience of the new birth. If we are talking of uh, knowing the experience, the true experience of the new birth and of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, now starting with the experience of the new birth, it is a death and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a birth. It's a death of the old sinful nature and a birth of a new nature, which the prophet say is uh, actually uh, a, a nature of Christ. And the prophet is saying here, if we yield ourselves and surrender ourselves to Christ, we are going to receive this nature. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself is going to continue to write the book of Acts through our lives. That's what the prophet said. That then you surrender yourself completely to Christ. And Christ comes in. And writes a book of Acts through you. See brethren. Ati ukizaweza uh, kujisalimisha kwa Yesu Christo. Na kujipeana kwake. Anakuja dani yako. Anaweza kuandika kitabu kingine. Chamatendo ya mitume. Muendeleo wa pale mitume waliachia. Matendo yale yale. Yanatufuata. Na inakuwa wanatu wanapoona. Matendo yale yale ya kiendelea katika maisha ni mwetu. Basi, wanajua ya kwamba hii ni Yesu Kristo a, 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 akiwa dani ya wetu wake. Kama vile alivyo akiwa dani ya mitume. So, the prophet, uh, as, I, as, I, uh, as I try to uh, completely show you about this death and birth. In the message which is called the faith that was one delivered to the saints, 
which was preached in 1953, paragraph 51, the prophet is saying here, until that old kind of Adamic nature is killed in a man, he is still a sinner. He might go to the church so often. He might put his name in a book. As long as those things are in him, he is still out of line with God. Look at it, brethren. Nabi Anasema, I'm trying to show you the true experience of the new birth. It's not joining the church. It's not being a religious person. It's not the water baptism. It is not actually paying your tithes and your offering, which is good. You must do that. But the prophet is saying here, until that old canon, can Adamic nature is killed in a man, he is still a sinner. You see, brethren, that is why we have uh, brothers and sisters in our churches ambao hawawezi kuishi maisha ya Ukristo. Wangali dhambi zao zinawafuatwa. Ndio walikubali kuokolewa na Yesu Kristo, wanamkiri Kristo mkombozi wa maisha yao. Lakini tunaona namna gani ya kwamba is wangali ni watenda dhambi. Na wangali wako nje ya mpango wa Mungu ikiwa hawajazaliwa mara ya pili, nabii anasema they are still sinners in our churches. Na hawa watu wakiwa wenye dhambi katika makanisani mwetu wanakuwa wenye dhambi wakiwa katika makanisani mwetu kwa sababu bado hawajaongoka hawajapata kubadilishiwa asili ya maisha maisha yao <coughs> na kitu ambacho tunaona chaweza kuleta hiyo asili mpya ama mabadiliko katika maisha yao ni kule kufa kwa asili ya dhambi na kuzaliwa katika asili mpya ya Kristo kupitia kwa neno la Bwana basi hiyo ndio kitu ambayo nataka wa ndugu na wadada mkaweze kuelewa ndio ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili wa kweli. Kwa hivyo kuwa miongoni mwa kanisani mwetu hiyo haikupi ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili. Ya kwamba kwenda kutubu dhambi na kubatizwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo hiyo ilikuleta tu katika ushirika wa waaminio katika familia ya Mungu mahali ambapo sasa unaweza kupata ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na ujuzi wa kupata ujuzi wa kubatizwa na Roho Mtakatifu hiyo haikupa ujuzi wa kweli wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili wala kubatizwa na Roho Mtakatifu so lazima mambo haya tukaiweze kuya, kuyaelezea kwa watakatifu ili watakatifu wakaweze kujua ni kitu gani ambacho wanatafuta ama ni kitu gani ambayo wanaelekea kukitafuta na jinsi ya kukitafuta. Kwa hivyo nabii anasema, uh, watu wanaweza kuweka majina yao katika vitabu vya makanisa, lakini ikiwa mambo haya ya dhambi ya gari ndani yao, nabii anasema, wangari wako katika wangari ni watenda dhambi na wangari uh, watu hawa uh, wako nje ya mpango wa Mungu. Katika ujumbe mwingine ambao unaitwa uh, the unity Uh, of one God in one church paragraph 71 the prophet say here now in this nature when that nature is still in you that sinful nature is not dead the prophet is saying here how can he work with you when you have the nature of the spirit of the devil is in there listen brethren the reason why the gifts of God which we know God invested his gift in the lives of the people. And when we look at the believers and our congregation in our churches, we should we should see God gifts laying there in the lives of these people. But this this gift and you know the prophet said it's only the baptism of the Holy Ghost that can put these gifts in operation. But the, the prophet is saying here ya kwamba anawezaje Mungu kufanya kazi na wewe kwa wakati ungali uko na ile asili ya loho wa shaitan. See, the prophet is calling that sinful nature that you have and you have been having all this time you have been a message believer. The prophet is calling that sinful nature the spirit of the devil. And the prophet is saying the reason why God cannot work with you is because you don't have the holy spirit which you need to get and you don't have the new birth and then you have the spirit of the devil. The prophet say here, how can he work with you? When you have the nature of the spirit of the devil is in there. Every man born or not is born in sin. Shaped in iniquity and come to the world speaking lies. That's right. So in that kind of Adamic nature, how can a man achieve anything only by through his intellectuals? But when he comes to be a new creature, 
the old man has passed out and a new man, Christ, takes uh, uh, his throne in a human heart and then life and then life looks different. Then he starts on a new road from his own selfish motives to big ideas to make himself something big. He starts toward Cal uh, Calvary to recognize God. See my brethren, ati, dio naona ya kwamba lazima mtu awe kiumbe kipya kwa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na ule utu wa kale ukaweze kuondoka na mtu mpya ambaye ni Kristo akaweze kuchukua uh, kiti e, cha mamlaka katika moyo wa mwanadamu nabii anasema hiyo ikiwa ndiyo njia uh, ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya kweli e, wa kweli e, uyo ukiwa ndiyo ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili wa kweli nabii sasa anasema hapa ati ndiyo wakati mtu akipata ujuzi huu maisha yake na wakati Kristo anakuja na anakaa katika moyo wako katika mamlaka ya kiti cha moyo wako nabii anasema it is when that old sinful nature uh, uh, that old nature man has passed out the new man Christ take his throne in human heart then life looks different and he starts on new road from his own selfish motives till big ideas to make himself something big he starts right towards Calvary to recognize God then his all his objective and his motives under his achievement and that uh, and all that he is raised in the glory of Christ where Christ paid the price for human life Christ is our life see the only way you can have a different life from uh, uh, which one uh, from the one that you are having now the only time the prophet is saying here you can have your life can look different is when that sinful old na nature dies and a new man which is Christ is born in your life. Then the prophet is saying, when that happens, which is the true experience of the new birth, when that happens, then your life will look different. Na tunaona baada ya hiyo kukutendeka, nabia nasema, maisha ya mtu huyu yanabadilika. Kwa sababu mungu hamezaliwa dami yake na hamechukua mamulaka ya maisha yake akiwa hamekalia kiti cha, uh, cha mamulaka katika moyo wake. Arafu mtu huyu anaondokea uh, his selfish motives. Now, now, the reason why we have brothers and sisters who are still selfish, selfish motives and objectives, and uh, 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 and uh, and uh, this, and you know, the prophet said, there is nothing like selfish motives and objective will never do anything, never do anything good to you. So the prophet is saying, even the selfishness that we are seeing in our lives of our brethren can only go away from their lives when they receive this experience of the new birth. Because the prophet is saying here that when they are born again and when they receive this experience of the new birth, a true experience, then they start on a new road from their own service motive to big ideas to make themselves big. And they start, they start, they start right towards Calvary, uh, recognize God. Uh, and the prophet is saying they are all objectives and motive and achieve, achievement will always be there for the glory uh, uh, of, of the cross and of Jesus Christ. Listen, brethren. Kwa hivyo ni kusema ya kwamba wakati wa wote ambao wana, watu wako makanisani mwetu na hawajaweza kupata ujuzi huu wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili basi unaona tutakuwa na wadugu na wadada ambao wangali wanagaga katika dhambi kwa sababu wa, watu hawa hawajazaliwa mara ya pili. Ndio unaona Paulo alisema hivi katika kitabu cha Warumi. Uh, katika kitabu cha Warumi ya kwamba Ule utu wa kale lazima uzikwe na ufe katika Kristo na utu upya ambaye ni maisha mapya katika maisha yetu yakaweze kuzaliwa hapo ndipo tunaweza kupata mabadiliko katika maisha ni mwetu nabii eh, paulo alisema hivi katika kitabu cha warumi sita mstari wa kwanza paka mstari wa saba. paulo anasema hivi ah tuseme nini basi tudumu katika dhambi ili neema isidi kuwa nyingi hasha sisi tuliofia dhambi tuisiji tena katika dhambi hamufahamu ya kuwa sisi tuliobatizwa katika Kristo Yesu tulibatizwa katika mauti yake basi tulizikwa pamoja naye kwa jia ya ubatizo katika mauti yake kusudi kama Kristo alivyofuka katika wafu kwa jia ya utukufu wa baba hivyo hivyo na sisi tuenende katika upya wa uzima kwa maana mlivyounganika naye 
katika mfano wa mauti kadhalika mtaunganika kwa mfano wa kufuka kwake mkijua neno hili ya kuwa utu wetu wa kale ulisurubishwa pamoja naye ili mwili wa dhambi ubatilike tusitumikie dhambi tena kwa kuwa yeye alikufa amehesabiwa haki mbali na dhambi unaona ndugu dada ya kwamba na maandiko Paulo anaonyesha ya kwamba kule kuzikwa na kufuka katika Kristo tulizikwa katika asili yetu ya dhambi tulipobatizwa ni mfano wa kule kufa na katika kufufuka ni kule kufufuka naye katika utu upya tunapobatizwa tunazikwa tunapozikwa ule utu wa kale unazikwa katika kaburi na sahaurifu na tunapofufuka tunafufuka katika utu upya ambaye ni Kristo na basi hapo ndipo na maandiko Paulo anasema ili ile utu wa kale ubatilike tusitumikie dhambi tena. Kwa hivyo wakati wa wote ambao ule utu wa kale ulioko katika maisha yako ugali bado haujakufa basi ni kusema namna gani? Basi ni kusema wakati wa wote wewe hauwezi kuishi maisha ambayo ni ya Ukristo kwa sababu asili yako ya kale ingali bado haijabatilika. Ungali wewe ni mateka wa dhambi. Na basi nabii anasema Paulo anasema ili tusiishie dhambi ule utu wa kale ubatilike. Na unaweza kubatilika lini wakati unapobatizwa, unazikwa na kufuka na Kristo. That is the time you can receive this true experience of the new birth. So, eh, katika kitabu cha Wakorinto wa kwanza, Wakorinto wa pili, sorry, uh, maandiko inasema hivi katika mstari katika Wakorinto wa pili, tano mstari wa 17. Maandiko inasema hapa Therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things become anew Ati basi maandiko inasema hivi hata imekuwa mtu akiwa ndani ya Kristo amekuwa kiumbe kipya ya kale yamepita tazama yamekuwa mapya How mtu anawezaje kuwa ndani ya Kristo Yesu ni wakati listen brethren Therefore if any man be in Christ how do we get in Christ We get in Christ after we receive the experience of the new birth and of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and by one spirit we are baptized into the body of Jesus Christ that is how we truly ex- uh, uh, enter into Christ that is how we get into Christ and the prophet is uh, Paul is saying here therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature you become a new creature you receive the, the only way you are You, you are a new creature by the new birth is only when the, the the old things has passed away and behold all things become anew kwa hivyo ndugu na wadada tunapoendelea kuongelea kuhusu jambo hili la kuzaliwa mara ya pili uh, basi lazima mkaweze kujua ya kwamba uh, ni lazima tukaweze kujua mambo haya ya kwamba itusipozaliwa mara ya pili basi unakumbuka nabii alisema nukuru ambazo nimewapea hapa siku nyingi sana ambao sioni kama kuna haja ya kuwapea tana e, e, kwa sababu nabii anasema u, ukifa utoke dunia hii kama haujapata ujuzi huu wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili if you die my brother my sister after we preached a message like this teaching you advising you by the word of god and you don't actually take in action then and you remember in our in our last sermon the prophet said because we were born in sin and we come to this world sleeping in iniquity god provided a way of escape through the new birth and the baptism of the holy ghost is god provided a way out of death to come back to life so the only way you can come out of that is through the new birth and the baptism of the holy ghost and the prophet said if you reject this way then you'll be judged if you reject god provided way then you'll go to the judgment kwa sababu mungu alitengeneza njia ya wokofu wako na ukombozi wako na wewe ulipokuwa hapa duniani ulinaswa na ulefi na ulafi wa masumbufu ya maisha ya dunia hii anasa ya dunia hii ukakosa kushughulikia ufalme wa mbinguni na haki yake basi ukikosa kufanya hivyo 
na utoke katika dunia hii wakati ambapo bado hujapata ujuzi huu wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili nabii anasema namna hii wewe hautakuwa sehemu ya kanisa ambayo itaenda mbinguni na katika unyakuzi listen to this the prophet has advised us i've given you this quote and perhaps i'll give you the for the for the last time the prophet is saying here if you die without experience of the new birth and of the baptism of the holy ghost that is why we are we are talking about the true experience of the new birth and of the baptism of the holy ghost so that our brethren can clearly uh, when they know they have truly received this true experience then they know they are part of the church that will be in the heaven and not be in the rapture because the prophet said if you go without this experience both the new birth and the baptism of the baptism of the holy ghost then if you go without this experience you are not going to be the church you are not going to be that part of the church that is that will go to heaven and you will be in the rapture the prophet said in the message five identification of the true church of the living god paragraph 169 true identification of the true church of god so the prophet is saying here now can we get to heaven without being in the church you can't be in the church until you are born again so listen brethren you know wakati mwingi tunachangaja mambo yetu na neno la Mungu. Sasa hapa Nabii anauliza swali ya kwamba je, twaweza kwenda mbinguni pasipo kuwa katika kanisa? Nabii anajibu anasema, hauwezi kuwa kanisa mpaka uzaliwe mara ya pili. <laughs> na unaona wadugu wengi wanasema ya kwamba wanaenda kanisa. Wana, wanatoka kanisa ama wao wanajiita kanisa la Mungu. Lakini tunaona hapa nabii akisema you are not you are not a church of the living God. That church that the Lord will come for to take that church to the rapture. You are not that church until you are born again. If what the prophet is saying here is something to go by, then the prophet is saying, how can we get into heaven without being in the church? You can't be in the church until you are born again. You can't go to heaven until you are born again. If you are born again, you are in the church. So you can't go to heaven uh, until you are born uh, until you are member of this church. And you can't be a member until you are born into it. So, if you want to know whether you'll be in the rapture or whether you go to heaven, the only way you can have a true blessed assurance or you the way you can be certain that you'll be there in heaven and in the rapture. Just get the experience, the true experience of the new birth and of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because the prophet is saying here, for you to be a member or to be a part of that church that you go to heaven, you become a member of that church through the true experience of the new birth. The only way you can go to heaven is through the new birth, the prophet is showing us here. And the only way also you can be the true church of God that you go to heaven is only ex- again through the experience of the new birth. So the prophet is saying you want to become a member of it when you are born into that church. And so now the prophet continues to say here, now let me smother you a little proof. And you can't be a member unless God has called you to be a member. Now how happy ought you to be for that? For we were predestinated before the foundation of the world and your names were written in the Lamb book of life, church book, therefore before the foundation of the world. That is the uh, 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 that is the uh, that's the Bible. The Bible says uh, Antichrist, the organization, the Catholic Church, and the rest of the organization will deceive all upon the face of the earth, whose names are uh, whose names written uh, whose names are written in the Lamb Book of Life before the foundation of the world. Jesus said, "All that the Father has given to me will come, uh, will, me will come to me." That's His own word. It is not what you done, but what He done. See. And the prophet is anabi anasema hapa ili wewe uwe mshirika wa kanisa hilo ambaye anazaliwa mara ya pili awe mshirika wa kanisa hilo na mantiko anabi anasema ya kwamba lazima Mungu akuite na wale ambaye anawaita ni wale ambaye alikusudia kibele na na wale ambao aliweka majina yao katip, katika kitabu cha mwanakondo uh, cha mwanakondo cha uzima wa milele cha mwanakondo kwa sababu nabi anasema kwa sababu Biblia inasema wale ambao majina yao hayako katika kitabu hicho wataweza kudanganywa na madhehebu na ukatoliki wale majina yao ambaye hawakuandikwa uh, katika uh, majine, uh, katika kitabu cha mwanakondoo cha uzima wa milele lakini wale ambao 
waliandikwa katika kitabu kile basi wale baba akiwaita wanakuja kwake wanakuja kwake kwa sababu wao ni sehemu ya neno la Mungu so tunaona basi eh, it is only eh, by the new birth eh, we can be able uh, to go to heaven the prophet in the, another message here that uh, this quote I've been giving you regularly the prophet is saying in the in the message the action to an action which was preaching 1959 paragraph 55 he said i am going to ask you that hasn't got the baptism of the holy ghost and you would like to receive the holy ghost here is the uh, time to start it you are here in the campground you are here at the time to receive it you know that no one will be in the rapture without the holy ghost let me repeat that you know that there is no one who will be in the rapture without the holy ghost there will be sleeping virgin the rest of, of the dead lived not a thousand year unaona ya kwamba nabii anasema ya kwamba mnajua ya kwamba hakuna mtu ambaye atakuwa katika unyakuzi pasipokuwa amepata ule ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu na kukumbuka ndugu dada ukitoka dunia hii uingie kaburini wakati ambapo haujapata ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na wakati ambao haujapata ujuzi wa, ku, wa Roho Mtakatifu basi uh, unajua nabii alisema death cannot change uh, uh, your, the condition you are in you the, the way you died is the way you rise up kwa sababu ukikufa katika hali ya dhambi ukikufa ukiwa bila ujuzi huu kifo hakika hakitakubadilisha utaamuka tu vile ambavyo wewe ulilala kwa hivyo kwa sababu nabii alisema we must be born here or not we must be filled with the baptism of the holy ghost when we are here or not that is why hii ndio kitu cha muhimu sana ambacho nabii anasema ni zaidi ya nguo ni zaidi ya chakula ni zaidi ya nyumba zaidi ya biashara yako ni zaidi ya pesa ni zaidi ya mali ni zaidi ya utajiri ni zaidi ya mambo yote ni zaidi hata ya ya bibi yako na bwana yako ni zaidi ya elimu yako ni zaidi ya mambo ambayo unatafuta hapa duniani kwa sababu ukifa bila ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili kama ambavyo tumeona na ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu wewe si sehemu ya kanisa ambalo litaenda mbinguni na litakuwekwa katika unyakuzi. Ninapomaliza kutoka katika jambo hilo, basi lazima tukaweze kujua ya kwamba eh, eh, ni lazima tupate ule ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili. Na ni lazima uh, tukaweze kujua, lazima tupate ule ujuzi wa kujaza Roho Mtakatifu. Na sio uh, 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 juzi uh, uh, ujuzi fake sio ujuzi uh, wa urongo basi tupate ule ujuzi wa kweli kwa sababu tusipopata ujuzi wa kweli basi hatuwezi kufanya nini hatuwezi hatuwezi uh, hatuwezi kuwa sehemu ya kanisa ambalo litaenda biguni na ambalo litaenda katika unyakuzi sasa kabla tuingilie jambo ambalo ni la kuangalia huu juzi wa kweli wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na wa ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Kuna kitu kingine ningependa wa ndugu na wadada wajue. Tunapofikiria kuhusu ubat, eh, kuhusu ujuzi wa kweli wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na wa ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Ni lazima tukaweze kujua ya kwamba ujuzi huu unaweze kana tu kupatikana kwa wale ambao ni begu za Mungu because eh, we know that the devil in the beginning uh, injected his seed in the human race and then god must have a provision in his word to make sure that the devil and his seed the serpent seed will never close the boundary and enter to the kingdom of god that is the reason why it is only the seed of god which can receive this experience of the new birth and of the baptism of the holy ghost the serpent seed cannot receive this experience so the prophet said for you to actually to get clear picture of what i'm saying because lazima tukaweze kujua kama wewe si mbegu uh, ya Mungu ujuzi huu wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili hauwezi kuupata na tunajua makanisani mwetu ah tunawaaminio na watu ambao wanajifanya kuamini na wengine hata hawajaamini kabisa kabisa 
huu ujuzi hauwezi kupatikana na watu wajifanyao kuamini na wale wasioamini ujuzi huu Mungu ameutengea tu wale ambao ni begu yake na kubuka jinsi am, ya jinsi ama jia ya kipekee ambayo unaweza kuwa begu ya Mungu ni ya kwamba uwe ulikuwa katika Mungu kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya dunia ni uwe ya kwamba watoto wangu ni begu yangu namna gani ni kwa sababu kabla sijawazaa walikuwa ndani yangu kabla sijawazaa ndio sababu wao ni mbegu yangu na wewe ili uwe ujue ama ukaweze kujua ya kwamba wewe ni begu ya Mungu lazima iwe ya kwamba ulikuwa begu iliyokuwa ndani ya baba yako Mungu neno kabla hata ulimwengu huu haujaweza kuumbwa because that is the only way we can prove you to be a seed of god even the prophet say as we are going to see as times goes by the only way you can prove your predestination whether you are predestinated or not is whether you are in god before the foundation of the world if god was your dwelling place before the foundation of the world is a seed of god then that proof that you are predestinated seed of god but if you are not there then you are not that seed we are talking about so the prophet say here in the message simulinian church age book chapter 4 the prophet is saying here now then here we are coming to a con- to conclusions to conclusion as the eternal logos god was manifested in son and in jesus dwelt the fullness of god and bodily and eternal life and the, and that eternal one was the father manifest in flesh and thereby gained the title of son tikiza sasa tunapokuja katika kumalizia ule logos wa umilele ambaye alidhihirishwa katika mwana Yesu ambaye katika Kristo akuliishi utimilifu wote wa Mungu ule uzima aliyekuwa ni uzima wa milele baba akadhihirishwa katika mimi na hapo basi alipodhihirishwa katika mwili akawa na hili taji la mwana. Nabii sasa hapo anatuambia na sisi ya kwamba Jesus Christ because he was in God. And in Jesus Christ dwelt the fullness of God bodily. And he eternal one which was Jesus Christ was manifested in flesh and gained the title of son. The prophet say even so we eternal in his thoughts in our turn became the many members spoken word seed manifest in the flesh and those eternal thoughts now manifest in flesh are the sons of God even as we are called unaona kama vile Yesu Kristo alivyotoka kwa baba a akawa mwana ama yeye Mungu wa umilele akadhihirishwa katika mwili katika mtu aitwaye Kristo na akapata taji la kuwa mwana wa Mungu nabii anasema hivyo hivyo na sisi tukiwa tulikuwa katika mawazo yake ya umilele basi tulifanyika washirika wa mbegu yake iliyonenwa ikiwa imedhihirishwa katika mwili na zile e, yale mawazo yake ya umilele yaliyodhihirishwa sasa katika mwili hao ndio wana wa Mungu kama vile sisi tunavyoitwa unaipata nabii anaendelea kusema hapa we did not become seed by the rebirth sisi hatui begu kwa sababu ya kuzaliwa mara ya pili we were seed therefore we are reborn for the only elect can be reborn because we are seed is the reason we could be quickened in non seed there is nothing to quicken nao na wapendwa nabii anasema hivi ya kwamba sisi hatui begu ya Mungu kwa sababu ya kuzaliwa mara ya pili 
ujusi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na ujanso wa roho mtakatifu sio kile kitu kinakufanya uwe mbegu a a unazaliwa mara ya pili na unapata ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili kwa sababu hata kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya dunia wewe ulikuwa ni mbegu kwa hivyo ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na wa kujazwa na roho mtakatifu unaweza kuajia tu wale ambao walikuwa ni mbegu ya Kristo ama mbegu ya Mungu na nabii na, anatuonyesha hapa ya kwamba jinsi ambavyo unaweza kuwa mbegu ya Mungu ni wakati ambapo wewe kama ulikuwa ndani yake kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya dunia kwa sababu kila mbegu ya mwana wa, wa mtu ama binti ya mtu lazima hiyo mbegu iwe ilikuwa ndani ya baba yake hata mimi kabla sija kuzaliwa ni mtoto wa baba yangu kwa sababu gani kwa sababu kabla hajanzaa mimi nalikuwa ndani ya baba yangu hata wakati alikuwa kijana mdogo akicheza mpira na sisi tunakuwa mbegu za Mungu namna gani ikiwa tulikuwa ndani yake tukiwa mawazo ya umilele ndani ya Mungu kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya dunia basi tulikuwa mbegu za Mungu zilionenwa na tunapozaliwa katika mili hapa duniani tunakuwa ni mbegu za Mungu zikidhihirishwa katika mwili na hao wakiwa mbegu za Mungu namna hiyo ndio watu ambao wanaweza kuzaliwa na nabii hapa anasema kitu kitu ambacho ni muhimu sana because we were a seed is the reason we could be quickened in non seed there is nothing to quicken nabii anasema hapa kwa sababu tulikuwa mbegu za Mungu ndio sababu tunaweza kuishwa kwa sababu kwa wale ambao sio mbegu za Mungu hakuna kitu cha kuahuisha hakuna kitu kingehuisha kaini Hakuna kitu kingehuisha Esau. Hakuna kitu kingehuisha Baramu. Hakuna kitu kingehuisha Farao. Hakuna kitu kingehuisha kingehuishika ndani ya Judasi kwa sababu gani? Watu hawa hawakuwa mbegu za Mungu ziliokuwa ndani ya Mungu kabla ya kuwekwa mizingi ya dunia. Kwa sababu nabii anasema, ni kwa wale ambao ni mbegu peke yake ambao uh, ambao wanaweza kufanya nini? Kufanya kurejeshwa a uh, kurejeshwa kwa Mungu ni wao wanaweza kuhuishwa ili wakaweze kupata ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili so tunapoongea kuhusu ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili wa kweli na wa ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu kitu cha kwanza ambacho tunaweza kujua ndugu dada ikiwa wewe ni mbegu ya Mungu na ni mtoto wa Mungu basi kuna uwezo ndani yako you have potential you have ability in you there is god quickening power over in you and that quickening power is able to quicken you to the experience of the new birth and of the holy ghost the reason why is because you are a seed of god before the foundation of the world perhaps i give you another quote trying to uh, talk of the same here yeah, the prophet is saying something the prophet is saying he says something in the message god's power to transform which was preached in 965 paragraph 69 god's power to transform paragraph 69 the prophet said now if we are sons of god his attribute which you are an attribute of your father not your mother your father yes, listen to this brethren ikiwa sisi tulikuwa watoto wa mungu sifa ziliyotoka ama ziliyokuwa ndani ya mungu basi wewe ni sifa ya baba yako ama ni uzao ama ni begu iliyotoka katika baba yako sio mama yako nabii anasema hivyo you are father the germs raised in the father ate wewe ulikuwa begu ama chembe chembe ya uhai iliyokuwa katika bebe ya baba yako na ikiwa ya kwamba wewe haukuwa chembe chembe ya begu ya uhai iliyokuwa ndani ya Mungu hakuna hata vile unaweza kuwa mtoto wa Mungu hapa duniani. Nabii anasema hivi anapoendelea kusema hivyo. See, and now your mother was an incubator and bear you bear the seed of your father. The earth in flesh is also the incubator that bear the seed of God. Just exactly. Not the world eh, how great the world is. It is how great God eh, that made it. See? <clears throat> If you are a son of 
a son and daughter of God, then you are in the in God at the beginning. At ikiwa wewe ni sehemu uama wewe ni binti na mwana wa Mungu, basi wewe ulikuwa katika Mungu, hawa ulikuwa ndani ya Mungu kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya dunia ama pale mwanzo. You are his attribute. Wewe ni sifa yake ama wewe ni uzao wake. If you wasn't there then then you never was or never will be because I cannot bear from my loin the son of this man here or that man there I can only bear my own son they and they bear and they would bear my likeness hallelujah you see sons and daughters was in God at the beginning naona vile nabii anaileta vizuri hapa anasema ya kwamba ikiwa wa kwamba wewe kuwa kibele ulikuwa chembe chembe ya uhai ya begu ambayo ilikuwa ndani ya, be, ya baba yako na baba yako akakuzaa akakuleta hapa duniani hivyo hivyo ikiwa wewe ni binti na mwana wa Mungu basi ulikuwa chembe chembe ya Mungu ya uhai ya mbegu yake iliyokuwa ndani yake kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya ulimwengu na nabii hapa anasema hivi I want you to listen to this. Nabii hapa anasema hivi, basi wewe ni sehemu ama ni sifa ama ni uzao wa Mungu. Na kama nabii anaonya hapa, na kama haulikuwa wewe haukuwa chembe chembe ya uhai iliyokuwa ndani ya Mungu kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya dunia, hautakuwa, hauwezi kuwa na hautakuwa mtoto wa Mungu katika safari yako ya hapa duniani. But that is why the prophet is saying only those that were the seeds that were in him before the foundation of the world of before the foundation of the world can ha, can be a reborn uh, be, and can be re, uh, quickened by the spirit of god and the prophet is saying here if you are a daughter and a son of god you are you are in him at the beginning you are his attribute if you wasn't there then you never will be let the prophet say here I cannot bear a son of this man or of that man. Mimi siwezi kumzaa mtoto wa mtu huyu ama wa mtu yule. Nabii anasema hivi, siwezi kuwazaa watoto wa watu hawa, naweza tu kuwazaa watoto ambao wako viunoni mwangu. Na nabii anasema na wao watazaa watoto walio ndani yao. Na mimi nikisaa watoto wangu nabii anasema they would bear my likeness ya kwamba mimi nikizaa watoto wangu watazaliwa wakiwa na sura yangu unaona diposa unaona watu wengi kanisani katika maisha yao you cannot see god in them why because they have not received this experience because if you are born again then you come in this world with the likeness of God because you have received a new nature the nature of Jesus Christ the nature of your father the nature of the word of God then you must live like your father behave like your father talk like your father act like your father do things like your father live in this world like your father do the things that your father did why because you have the nature of your father and the reason why we are not seeing a lot of spiritual things happening like uh, healing the sick raising the dead cleansing the lepers and uh, uh, casting demons and the bright seeing are back again the deaf are hearing and the dumb speaking and cripples walking back again is because we have members of our churches who are not born again and they, their nature is not changed and they have not received the nature of their father the word jesus christ that is why we cannot see signs wonders and miracles following the believers because they have not yet received the nature of their father the word jesus christ because the prophet say here uh, the, uh, the, you say if if i bear uh, my own they would bear the, my likeness and the prophet say you see sons and daughters was uh, in god at the beginning you have got eternal life you say we believe it and we have got eternal life well there is only one form of eternal life that is god the only thing that is eternal is God. Then if you have got eternal life, that is that, that is in you, what, what you always was. And you were in the loins of God before even was a world. Nabi anasema hivi, ya kwamba, we, kumunasema kuna uzima wa mirele. Uzima kuna mtu moja tu ambaye 
ni uzima wa milele na uzima wa milele unaweza kuwa tu ndani yako kana kwamba wewe ukiwa ni uz, una uzima wa milele ulikuwa hata nao kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya ulimwengu kwa sababu gani ulikuwa katika eh, viuno vya Mungu kabla ya msingi wa dunia the only way then we can prove that we, we are eternal or we can prove eternal quality is because God our God is eternal then the seeds that were in him are also eternal because if our God is eternal then we the seeds of God that were in his loins before the foundation of the world that's what the prophet is saying then we are also eternal as our God is also eternal that is why we cannot die because we are eternal and so our God could not die because he was eternal the reason then again ourselves we cannot die for we are eternal as our father is eternal so you see my brother that is how you can prove that you have eternal life if you are in your father you are in your father you are a seed that was in your father before you were born that is how you can prove that you are a son of god uh, uh, a daughter of god with eternal life oh god it shall bless you so we have proved to you by the word of god that the only way you can be born and you can receive the baptism of the holy ghost through experience of the new birth and the baptism of the holy ghost is through uh is through uh uh if you were a seed of god that was in god uh before the foundation of the world ikama wewe ulikuwa mbegu ambayo ilikuwa katika mungu kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya dunia basi hapo hapo ndipo unaweza kupata huo ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili kama ulikuwa mbegu ya Mungu kama ulikuwa mbegu ya Mungu basi wewe unaweza kuzalika wewe unaweza kupokea ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili lakini kama ulikuwa wewe si mbegu ya Mungu basi hautawezekana wewe kupata ujuzi huu ujuzi huu umetengewa wale ambao ni mbegu za Mungu na kama wewe ni mbegu iliyokuwa ndani ya Mungu kabla ya kuwekwa mizingi ya dunia hata wakati hujazaliwa mara ya pili wewe ni binti na mwana wa Mungu wewe ugali unabeba uzima wa milele imejalia tu ime, imesalia tu wewe kupata nini kupata kupata kujua ni vipi utakavyoweza kupata huu ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na ndipo unaona sababu ambayo inazuia wale ambao and then if you are a seed of god then then, then the question comes if you are a seed of God that was in God, which can be able uh, or which have ability to be quickened to the new birth and to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and you have been the church for all this long, and you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost nor the experience of the new birth, then why is the reason you don't have this experience until now? Na wewe umekuwa kanisani miaka 40, miaka 30, miaka 20, miaka 10, miaka 5, all the years that you have been the church does not matter how many years you have been in the church <coughs> but you are supposed to to be born again because the experience of uh, of the new birth is a must yeah? it's a must to every believer this experience is a must to every believer it never said here that you ought to be born again no it's a must in the messages you must be born again. Paragraph 30, the prophet said. So now remember, it didn't say you ought to be born again. But you must. Now, we as English speaking people understand that the word must means that it is absolutely. You have got to do it. See? It's a must. Not you ought to. You would be better off if you did. But you must be born again. Oh, if we could just take the word this morning, uh, that word this morning, and break it down, what it means, and how it is totally impossible. And then it is, and then if it is that essential and that great, uh, that it is totally impossible to enter to the kingdom of heaven or even see it until we are born again. See? Ate, unaona haikusema unatakiwa uzaliwe mara ya pili haikusema unatakiwa mara sisi watu ambao ni wasomi wa kizungu tunajua 
lazima inasema ya kwamba ni yakini ni la muhimu sana si haikusema yati ya kwamba jaribu uzaliwe mara ya pili ama unatakiwa uwe mzuri ukizaliwa mara ya pili lakini ilisema ni yakini na ni ya lazima kila mtu akaweze kuzaliwa mara ya pili haikusema ya kwamba unatakiwa kuzaliwa mara ya pili lakini nabii anasema ya kwamba lazima uzaliwe mara ya pili kwa sababu ni vigumu sana kuweza kuona na kuingia katika ufalme wa mbinguni unaona na unaona ikiwa sisi ni mbegu za Mungu ikiwa sisi ni mbegu za Mungu na tumna ule uwezo na Mungu nabii ametuambia hivyo kwa sababu katika kila mbegu kumbuka kila mbegu ambayo ni ya asili kila mbegu imeumbwa ikiwa na uwezo wa kujizaa tena that is the the quickening power the prophet is talking about every seed has its its ability to quicken itself or to bring forth after its kind and if you are a seed of god you have ability you have a god transforming power can give you the ability to receive the new birth and you have been in the church for too long you have been in the church for all these years and according to the bible it is a must to every believer you are not requested to be born again you are told it's a must to be able to see or to enter to the kingdom of god is a must and you see the reason why many of our members they even don't comprehend the message and understand the message having been in the church for too long because the prophet is saying here that you cannot even understand this message clearly if you don't receive the, the, the this experience of the new birth because the prophet say to see is to understand you cannot clearly understand the word of god you cannot understand this revealed message which was preached to us or brought to us by Malachi 4 Elijah the seventh angel the seventh angel you cannot clearly understand this message till you receive the the the, the, the experience of the new birth ndio naona watu wengi na wadada wengi wako kanisani ukiongea mambo useme mihuri mbegu ya nyoka useme kudumu saba uongee mambo haya ya kisirisiri na yenye uridhi ya neno la Mungu nasikia wapendwa wengi wakilalamika unajua mimi sielewi mimi sielewi mimi sikii sijuku sijuangi anaposema mhubiri mambo haya mimi huwa sielewi na sasa sielewi utaelewa namna gani wewe si mmoja ya watoto wa Mungu na hisi siri sinafunuliwa watoto wa Mungu mtu umewakamuliza Yesu Kristo kwa nini unanena mambo haya yote kwa nini kila saa wanena nao kwa mafumbo Yesu Kristo akawajibia nyinyi macho yenyu na masikio yenyu yamebarikiwa nyinyi mmejaliwa kusijua siri sa ufalme wa mbinguni lakini wale watu wengine walioije ambao si baadhi yenu mambo yote huonyeshwa kwao kwa mifano ili kuangalia waangalie wasione kusikiliza wasikilize wasielewe wasije wakatubu dhambi zao wakaongoka na wakaweza kuponywa unaona that is why it is only the seed of god even to to understand the message to see this message to understand this message is not for everybody that is in our churches but it is only reserved or preserved it is only for the children of god imetengewa tu wale ambao ni wana na binti wa Mungu ndio wana uwezo wa kusikia ujumbe huu ndio wana uwezo wa kuelewa ujumbe huu ndio wana uwezo wa kuona na kusikia ujumbe huu kwa sababu ndani ya kusikia na ndani ya kujua kuna kufahamu Mungu na kumjua Mungu ndio uzima wa milele ndio wale ambao si mbegu hawawezi hata kusikia ujumbe huu hata wawe makanisani miaka nenda miaka rudi watakufa wakiwa katika hali hiyo lakini angalia ndugu dada ikiwa Mungu amekuwe alikupea kujelewa eh, siri za ufalme wa mbinguni na mlango wa kuanza kuingia eh, siri eh, katika ufalme wa mbinguni ni kule kusikia neno ni kujua ya kwamba wewe ni mtenda dhambi ni kujua ya kwamba unahitaji kubatizwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo kwa ondoleo la dhambi ili upate huu juzi ambao tunaongelea tunaongelea juu yake basi hapo ndipo ulianza safari yako ya kuja kupokea ujuzi huu kwa sababu gani kwa sababu wewe ni mbegu kama wewe si mbegu Ijapo kuwa make believers and non believers they also claim that they repented of their sins and they went for what about we know that is true and they, they, they you know they can say but you remember that's not matter dio naona tunasema ujuzi eh, eh, kubatizwa na maji hakukupea ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili 
kama ni hivyo unaona wanaojifanya kuamini na wasioamini wangepata huu ujuzi lakini hawawezi kupata kwa sababu tuliwapeleka kwa maji na tukawabatiza bado watasalia makanisani mwetu na hawatapata ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na hawatapata ujuzi wa kujasa na mtakatifu kwa sababu gani kitu kinaongoza mtu kupea huu ujuzi ni kusikia neno la Mungu na kuliona neno la Mungu na kumjua Mungu kwa sababu kumjua yeye ndio uzima wa milele na uzima wa milele ni kupata ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu tuliona hivyo So nabii anasema ni vigumu sana hata kuelewa mambo haya nabii anasema hivi ya kwamba if we if, if we take this word this morning and break it down what it means how it is totally impossible and then it is that essential and great it is totally impossible to enter the kingdom of heaven or see it until you are born again and so many different interpretation of the word born again we ought to seek it with all our heart to find out what it means just such this eh, 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 Uh, just such this subject through clear clear it out uh, the uh, that is the first beginning you must be born again and it's a very deep one unaona at tunaposfikiria juu ya jambo hili vile ambavyo linamaanisha ya kwamba ni la muhimu sana na ni hatuwezi kuona na kuingia katika ufalme wa mbinguni mpaka tukaweze kuzaliwa mara ya pili na tukijua ya kwamba vile tafsiri nyingi zimewekwa juu ya hili E, e, ya hili somo la lazima uzaliwe mara ya pili nabii anasema we ought to seek it out with all our heart to find out what it means ati tunapojua unaona tunapojua vile lipi ya muhimu kila ndugu kila dada na tukijua vile makanisa yetu yameweka tafsiri nyingi kuhusu kuzaliwa mara ya pili kila ndugu kila dada anatakiwa kuitafuta kwa haraka sana inamaanisha nini hii kuzaliwa mara ya pili. Ndugu dada itafute sana. Kumbuka ikiwa wewe ni beu. Tunaonyeshwa hapa una uwezo wa kuelewa sisi sa ufalme wa mbinguni na kuingia ufalme huo wa mbinguni. Kwa sababu kuona na, kusik, na kuingia kwanza unaelewa ili ndio uingie. That is why Jesus said you cannot in, in any way see nor enter because by understanding or seeing it you enter into it. So and you know The prophet say here uh, the reason if you are a seed of god then and you have not yet received this experience having been in our churches for this long then your problem might be might be uh, you have not received the right uh, uh, the right the right teaching about it because the prophet is saying here ya kwamba ikiwa itakosa kutafsiriwa ama kuelezewa vile ilivyo katika ilivyo maanishiwa na Yesu Kristo ndio naona ya kwamba ilifundishwa na Yesu Kristo mwenyewe haikufundishwa na kardinali na bishopu na papa ilifundishwa na Yesu Kristo na tukikosa kuishika kama vile Yesu Kristo alivyomaanisha wakati alipokuwa anaambia Nikodema lazima uzaliwe mara ya pili na maji na roho ili ukaweze kuona na kuingia katika ufalme wa mbinguni ikiwa hicho kituko ambacho Yesu anaambia Nikodema aweze kuwa nacho ili akaone na akaingia katika ufalme wa mbinguni ikiwa hicho kituko hakitaweza kuelezewa kwetu vizuri basi ni kusema ikielezewa vibaya na makanisa yetu hatutaipata and i want to believe the reason why if you have been in the church for too long there can be two things or three things which has been keeping you away from this one is your pulpit when i talk about the pulpit i mean the preachers that has been preaching to you or your pastor if your pulpit does not give you the right interpretation concerning the message of the new birth you will never receive the new the, 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 the new birth you will never receive You can receive a false birth, a false conception of what you call the new birth. But if because this experience, the true experience of the new birth can only be brought to you or be given to you by your new father, which is Jesus Christ the one. That means your pulpit, your pastor, your preachers must have ability to preach the true message, the true word of God. Because they are only the one which can bring the true birth, 
the true experience of a new birth. And the one reason why many of our believers does not have this experience of the new birth, true experience of the new birth and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, is because a lot of our churches have put their own interpretation of what is the new birth. And by doing, so, by doing so, they confuse the members of their churches and they receive a false birth of what the new birth is. And then they live with that saying, we are born again, we are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they never receive the true uh, experience of the new birth. So the prophet say like this. The prophet say this in the message, you must be born again, paragraph 29. Now, we find out that there are so many different meanings that the people put to it. Nearly all churches say that you must be born again. But each one has their own different interpretation. So that it means uh, 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 that it means uh, to be born again. At sasa tunajua na ama tumetambua ya kwamba. Watu wengi wameweka tafsiri nyingi sana kuhusu ni nini hii kuzaliwa mara ya pili. Na kila kanisa lina tafsiri yake ya kile wanasema hii ndio tafsiri ya kuzaliwa mara ya pili inamaanisha. This is the prophet say here. I might go to the Methodist church this morning. They say, we believe that you must be born again. How do you enter in, how do you interpret it? I go to the Baptist church and we believe we must be born again. How do you interpret it? Uh, and I would go to each church and would find uh, if we went all to the 900 different denominations of churches, there will be nine different interpretations. See? Now, now. Na bia nasema, watu wengi katika makanisa yao, ama makanisa yetu, ata yetu tunavile tunasema kuzaliwa mara ya pili ya kweli. Ndiyo hii, na hii ndiyo ni nahubiri. Because I must preach what is in me, and what I believe, and what I understand, and what I know it's the truth. Yeah? I am just responsible, not to all, but the little fellowship of Jericho, and who uh, God has given uh, me to be their overseer, or to be their preacher, whatever you call it. I'm not responsible for any other churches. I'm responsible for the little group that is in there. But the prophet is saying here, ya kwamba, makanisa yote, kila kanisa, ukienda katika kila kanisa, wanakile ambacho, wanatafsiri, hii diyo kuzaliwa mare ya pili. Nabi anasema, hapa pengine niende kwa kanisa la kimedodisti, wanasema tunamini lazima uzaliwa mare ya pili. Unaitafsiri na mnagani? Wanajinsi ambavyo wanaitafsiri. Niende katika kanisa la kibaptisti, Waulize, unaamini ya kwamba lazima tuzaliwe mara ya pili? Eh, tunaamini lazima mtu abazaliwe mara ya pili. Una itafsiri na mna gani? Wana vile wana itafsiri. Na nabi anasema, ukienda katika madhehebu haya yote, miatisa na kitu, ama zaidi ya miatisa, unaona ya kwamba wakona tafsiri miatisa, ya kile ambacho wanamanisha, lazima uzaliwe mara ya pili. Sasa nabi anasema hivi. So, See that there is many different interpretation and yet a bible doctrine there must be a, a must be and it and it is a truth somewhere basi kuona ya kwamba watu wameweka matafsiri mingi sana basi lazima tujue ya kwamba kuna mafundisho yale ambayo yako katika biblia na kuna ukweli mahali fulani kuhusu jambo hili sasa unaona Ion Dio, that is the most I can call the greatest stumbling block that has been keeping our members of our churches uh, who are the true seed of God with the ability to be quickened by the Spirit to receive the true experience of the new birth and of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The, their first problem is that the interpretation they get from their pulpit and from their preachers concerning what is the new birth. And what is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? The prophet in the message blasphemous name, which was uh, uh, which was preached in 1962, paragraph 91, said, "Now I believe that the reason that there is so many confusion today about the Holy Spirit, it is not correctly taught. I believe the uh, 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 I believe the baptism is taught. You see, Nabi Anasema Yakwaba Ninaamini Sababu Ambayo." kuko uh, na 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 kuchanganyikiwa kwingi sana kuhusu ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu ni kwa sababu haifundishwi vizuri it is not correctly taught ikikosa kufundishwa vizuri watu wakikosa kufundishwa vizuri 
kuhusu ni nini kuzaliwa mara ya pili kama vile ambavyo tunakufundisha ya kwamba ujuzi wa kweli wa kufundishwa wa, wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili si kujiunga na kanisa sio kubadilishwa katika maji sio kusema nilitubu kama yule baba alisema ninajua kijana yangu aliingia kanisani akatubu dhambi zake na alibatizwa tu hapa hapa katika pool nabii alimwambia hiyo haikubadilisha asili ya huyu kijana ni kwa sababu yeye angali na ile asili ya baba yake na mama yake na ndio sababu anasumbua huyu msichana unakumbuka ile story na kwa ajili yeye ako katika asili hiyo na Sauli asioe huyu msichana mpaka asi, asili yake ibadilishwe kwa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na kujaza na Roho Mtakatifu na kwa sababu akiwa msichana huyu kama akiwa katika asili ya dhambi ataleta kuzimu ndani yake that is why we have a lot of problems in our lives in our marriages in our families because the father is not born again the mother is not born again the family members they are not born again they are not filled with the baptism of the holy ghost they are like animals living together now you put a tiger together with a, with a lion you put a lion together with a cheetah and the, this even what you are going to have ni maafa ni maafa kwa sababu watauana No wonder we are breaking our families, we are breaking our homes, we are breaking our marriages. We are killing each other. Eh? Ndugu dada, wewe hujui ya kwamba kuna wadada wanatafuta kuua bwana zao. Haujui kuna wadugu wanatafuta kuua bibi zao ili waolewe na waoe. Kwa sababu wamechoshwa na wale ambao wako nao. Na shida si kuua hata ukiua bibi yako na uwe mwingine uwe bwana yako na upate nafasi ya kuolewa na mwingine na, na bado upate dugu dada abaye hajazaliwa mara ya pili hajajaza na mtakatifu upate dada baada ya kumuondoa mke wako ambaye hajazaliwa mara ya pili hajajaza na mtakatifu ungali umeoa mnyama kwa sababu nabii anasema ya kwamba mwanadamu asiye na Mungu ni kama mnyama na tunabadilika kuwa wanyama namna gani? Tunabadilika kutokewa na asili ya ule unyama, asili ya dhambi, wakati tunampata Kristo ndani ya maisha yetu. Na tunampata Kristo ndani ya maisha yetu namna gani? Wakati ambapo tunazaliwa mara ya pili na kujaza na mtakatifu, tunakuwa viumbe vipya, tunakuwa binti na wana wa Mungu. Watu hawa ndio wanaweza kufurahia maisha ya doa wamezaliwa mara ya pili. Nabii alikuwa anauliza huyu huyu eh, I don't want to go to that message but you can go to that message and read for yourself para, it is the message paradox. And uh, eh, I think starting from paragraph 20, 29 something there. And the prophet was saying wewe baba ya huyu kijana wewe mama ya huyu msichana kwa nini nyinyi mko watamu? Why are you so sweet you people? It's because you yourself you received the new birth and you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's the reason why you yourself you are sweet because you received the uh, uh, you received uh, uh, that that new birth uh, and that baptism of the Holy Ghost. I can give you some very quickly uh, what the what the what the prophet said in that message which is paradox a message Uh, which was preached in 1963 now i'm giving you paragraph 26 let me give you that paragraph 26 the prophet is saying here talking about that boy eh? now the genes in the father and in the mother of this boy no matter how much they are converted still remain the flesh that had been interpreted out of this boy at ijapokuwa chembe chembe ya huyu baba na huyu mama eh iko katika wamebadilika haijalishi hawa wameongoka namna gani chembe chembe zao ndio zilizaa huyu kijana therefore the boy has got complex in him just like his mother mother's family and they are not forgiving they will not apologize and that is where the boy stands ate hizo chembe chembe ziliyomzaa huyu kijana ndizo ziliyotoka kwa baba yake watu ambao katika familia ya mama yake hawawezi kusameheana na hawawezi kuomba msamaha hapo ndiyo huyu kijana anasimama paragraph 27 the prophecy now i said to the to the father no matter how much you raised him up i said now now look at you out of your family all of them runs and fighting and shooting and cutting and so forth and look at your family to, to your mother they are a bunch of people just sat there won't speak independently independent and so forth irrelevant to the region but said i said It is not you are the one uh, of all your sisters and brothers 
and you are you are sweet and kind and for and forgiving what does that and you are three part of the family tree you have received the holy ghost that is the thing that made you tender and sweet it is not your people anymore it is christ that lives in you now ukiwa baba ama bwana ama mshirika wa kanisa yeyote na hujapata ujuzi huu wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili you cannot make good a good member of your church you cannot make a good father a good a good husband you cannot make a good sister in your church you cannot make a good wife a good uh, mother of your children a good citizen even of this nation until you receive this this new birth and the baptism of the holy ghost because the prophet is telling both the mother and the father of this of this young man is because you yourself you are converted you received the baptism of the holy ghost that is why you are tender and you are sweet is because you received the baptism of the holy ghost it is no longer uh, that nature of your family to where you come from but it is the nature of Christ who now lives in you oh hallelujah and i say paragraph 29 i say the boy look here at your family practically all of them are drunks and so forth and they how moody and high temper and how strong but you are not you are kind forgiving what is it the holy spirit you are no more uh, what you are it is christ in you i say now the same thing has to happen to your son unaona akawaambia unaona shida ya huyu kijana ni nini ni familia ambayo imemzaa ambayo ni familia yenu walevi watu ambao ni wahasira kama ya mukizi watu ambao hawawezi kusameheana lakini angalia eh, eh, roho mtakatifu ni, ni, ni ijapo kuwa mmetoka katika familia hiyo lakini roho mtakatifu ambaye ni Kristo anayekaa ndani yenu ndiye amemfanya nyinyi muwe mnaweza kusameheana na muwe watu wa wazuri na huyu na, na hiyo jambo lilofanyika kituko hicho kiliyofanyika kwenu lazima kimfanyikie huyu kijana Now <laughs> listen to paragraph that he nadifanya nicheke sana and the father is up and said my son went to the altar he was baptized correctly in the name of Jesus Christ and water baptism in the pool i said i know my son and said i know my son came to Christ at unaona wakati nabii alipoambia shida ya kijana huyu baba ya huyo kijana akaamka akasema mimi najua kijana yangu ya kwamba alikuta madhabahuni na akaweza kubatizwa sawa sawa katika jina la Yesu Kristo na mimi najua alibatizwa katika maji ya kidibu hiki na najua ya kwamba mtoto wangu alikuja kwa Kristo kuja kwa Kristo sio kubatizwa kuja kwa Kristo sio ku, ku, kujiunga na makanisa ya waaminio aha nabii anasema si hiyo na i say that may be your right all outward emotion he might be identified as a believer with the believers but until he is regenerated born again i advise that young man to never marry a woman he will make hell or not for her until that gentle sweet forgiving spirit of christ come in then that will be a paradox in itself to take the every nature of a boy that is bred between the father and mother and yet in his intellectual he is trying to his best to overcome it he can't do it he will never overcome it christ will have to overcome it when he lets christ in then he is already overcome that it will be a perfect paradox when a man is born of the spirit of god unaona nabi akamwambia hiyo haijalishi alibatizwa na alitubu na akawa na sehemu yake katika miongoni mwa waamini yao hiyo ni sawa ilifanyika mambo ya nje lakini mimi nasema ya kwamba isipokuwa huyu kijana akaweze kubadilishwa na akaweze kuzaliwa mara ya pili na akaweze eh, kubadilishwa asili yake na shauri asiwahi kumuoa huyo msichana kwa sababu akiwa huyo msichana atamletea kuzimu ndani ya maisha ya huyo msichana mpaka asili ya ule utamu wa roho mtakatifu anayesamee aje ndani yake ambayo is a paradox na nasema naondoe asili hiyo ambayo imemzaa huyu kijana kutoka kwa baba yake na mama yake ambaye anajaribu kuishinda kwa akili yake hawezi kuishinda kwa akili yake ataishinda tu kwa Yesu Kristo akimruhusu Yesu Kristo aje ndani yake Kristo atamshindania inakuwa ndiyo hivyo mtu anapozaliwa mara ya pili akimruhusu Kristo unaona what 
watu ni kumruhusu wanakosa kumruhusu Kristo aingie katika maisha yao wakaweze kuzaliwa mara ya pili na tuliona ya kwamba shida ambayo tuko nayo katika maisha ni mwetu yanazuia tukaweze kuishi maisha ya Ukristo kama hatuwezi kuishi maisha ya Ukristo maisha ya doa tutaishi namna gani maisha ya familia tutaishi namna gani maisha ya kanisani tutaishi namna gani maisha ya kuwa raia mzuri katika nchi tutaishi namna gani ndio naona wadugu hawa na wadada hawa kutoka kanisani manyumbani mwao hata katika nchi ni watu ambao ni wafisadi katika mambo ya kiroho na mambo ya kimwili they are all corrupt because they are still living in the corruption that is in this world and these people cannot make a good husband cannot make a good wife cannot make a good family father a family man or a family woman cannot be a good father good mother they cannot be a good brethren or good sister or a brother in our churches they are because they are always wallowing in sin oh god bless you brethren the reason why shida ni kwa sababu gani ni kwa sababu shida hii imetokana kwa sababu mambo haya yamefundishwa vibaya eh yamefundishwa vibaya na kwa sababu wamefundishwa vibaya wametokea vituko vya uongo ambazo wanaita ya kwamba wamezaliwa wamejazwa na Roho Mtakatifu na hawajapata ujuzi wa kweli ambao unalingana na maandiko wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na roho mtakatifu kwa sababu ukibadilishwa asili na kuzaliwa mara ya pili na kujaza na roho mtakatifu hauwezi kuendeesha katika dhambi na hauwezi kupenda mambo ya dunia hii na mambo ya ulimwengu utakuwa kiumbe kipya nabii alistoambia utaanza kupenda Mungu utaweza kupenda neno la Mungu utaanza kupenda, kupenda mambo ya neno la Mungu kwa sababu gani kwa sababu asili yako imebadilishwa katika maishani mwako na shida hii tupende tusipende ni sisi wahubiri tumeletea waaminio shida hii kama ni begu za Mungu kwa sababu kama kwa kweli waliamini vizuri dabasi ha, na wahubiriwe neno vizuri neno lile linaweza kuwasaidia kwa sababu wewe muhubiri na mimi hubiri sio sisi tunazaa washirika mara ya pili ni neno na neno ni Kristo ndiye baba yao na kama I I say I always ask this question if you you are past, you pastor Uh, and you have you are there in the pulpit you have never received the new birth you have never received the baptism of the holy ghost how do you expect the members of your church to receive that experience when you yourself have never received that experience first that is why god must always start first with the shepherd he must give the shepherd first this experience that is why peter before he preaches He had to go to the upper chamber and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the, of the new birth which the prophet said that they were give they were given the experience of the new birth and of the Holy Ghost in one act I can give you that quote they were given that experience of the new birth and of the Holy Ghost in one act Dio naona Yesu Kristo anawakataza msiende kufubiri mpaka mpokee ujuzi wa Roho Mtakatifu ndio naona Mungu anamwambia Petro siku ile utaongoka wewe Petro unanipenda na kupenda wewe Petro unanipenda na kupenda wewe Petro unanipenda basi chunga kondoo zangu na usiende kuwachunga wakati wote ambapo hujaongoka na ubebeba panga hapa na unaweza kuwakatakata wakifanya makosa unaona mchungaji ambaye alikuwa anabeba panga hapa lakini wakati alipoko, alipapata ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili na ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu katika nyumba ya juu Jerusalemu walipojaza na Roho Mtakatifu basi tunamuona Petro alikuwa na uwezo wa kuwashawishi viumbe vipya elfu tatu waingie kwa Kristo kwa njia ya kuzaliwa mara ya pili na kwa njia ya ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu aliwaambia tubuni mkabatizo mpate ondoleo na dhambi ili mkaweza kupata kipawa cha Roho Mtakatifu sababu ahadi hii ni yenu na watoto wenu na waliobali hiyo ni mambo ambayo tuliona pale because the prophet say here in the message you must be born again uh, in paragraph 125 the prophet is saying false prophets have false words at manabii wa uongo wanakuanga na neno la uongo 
creeds, denomination and sensation wanakuwa na, na, na mafundisho ya kanuni za, za madhehebu na misisimuko. Oh, bless God. All the thing you have to do. Ati wanasemanga, eh, kwa na kubariki. Ati hicho tu, dicho kitu ambacho unatakiwa kuwa na. You want to wear a ledger garment. Glory to God. The only thing you have to do. Ati unatakiwa kufa vasi la elia. Ati hicho dicho kitu unafa uh, kufa, ku, 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 kufanya. Uh, and the prophet say here, eh, you blank your mind. Ati hiyo, Inaosha tu mawaso yako. Don't think of a thing. Ate na ufikiri chochote ata kimoja. And say, oh, feel me, feel me, feel me. Awe gito wanasema, eh, buwana unijasa, unijasa, unijasa. The devil will sure do it. Ukiaza kuja hapa na musisimuko ya mafundishi ya urongo ya kuenda kuambiwa, mba muambia buwana unijasa, buwana unijasa. Shetani atakuwa hapa tiyari na atakujasa kitu. Ha? Eh? Kwa sababu haujui jinsi ya kuiendea. Kuiendea mungu si kushinda wapo ukibiringa piringa piringi kapo wa. Ukisema buwana buwana buwana. Buwana unijaze unijaze. Shetani atakuwa haraka hapo sana na atakujaze. The devil will sure do that. And when you rely upon that. Oh. <laughs> it land all over me. Brother Branham I felt oh glory to God. Hallelujah. Jumping up and down like the land. Oh I got it. And live like you live. By the fruit you shall know them. See. Not sensations. Unaona? Ate, siyo, eh, kuluka luka hivyo na nini, na kusema ondo kubrana amu ni maipata, ni maipata, na bia nasema na uishi kwa jabo hilo, na bia nasema tutawajua kwa matuda yao. Kwa sababu kama waliipata, maisha yao itabadilika. Na watazaa matunda ya lao mtakatifu. Lakini kama hawatazaa matunda ya lao mtakatifu, bali wanazaa matunda ya dhami na asili ya dhami na kupenda ulimwengu, basi kwa matunda yao, tutajua kama walipata ama wakupata. Nabi anasema hivi, Oh brother, you want to receive the Holy Ghost? Just get down to the altar and say, Glory, 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 glory. Until you speak in tongues. Oh, go back out there and live any kind of life. You lie, or life, you lie and you steal. Then they tell you about being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That is fanaticism. My church teaches different and say that you are born again, washed by the waters. Uh, uh, by, by the waters. No, no. Nabi anasema ya kwamba, ati, ati, Ate baada ya kuambiwa mambo haya yote na kusema ya kwamba utukufu utukufu bwana unijaze nimeogea nime naduka naduka ageni na alafu unaendelea kuishi maisha yale ambayo ulikuwa unaishi unaisha na sasa una, bado unadanganya na bado unaiba you see when lie and na sasa unasema ya kwamba ubatizwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo ate huyo ni eh, ni, 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 ni ni udini Na kwamba unasema uliosho na maji ya neno bado haujapata bado haujapata huo ujuzi huo ujuzi hauwezi kupata kwa njia ya aina hiyo lazima ukaupate kwa njia ya neno la Mungu Habi anasema hivi katika ujumbe unaitwa Uh, uh, still the message you must be born again paragraph 101 first keeping enough of true mankind of true to make a form of godliness ate ate hi urongo unamuesheshaka muaminio kuishi katika mufano wa kukana uungu and listen now i'm saying something here i want you to listen them kind of false conception ate hapa ninasema jambo wanapatanga kudugwa mimba kwa urongo You know what a false conception is. Lead millions of people to a false birth. Ate, na munajua, hii kudanganywa, kuhubiriwa uongo, na wada, wanaingia katika, wanatungwa mimba katika urongo, huwa inaongoza mamilioni ya watu kupata kuzaliwa kwa uongo. False teachers who lead the people to believe sensations. Wahubiriwa uongo, wataongoza watu kuamini kwa misisimuko because you jumped all over and you got it oh because you got a uh, really funny feeling went over you see the lights in front of you and got blind and stagger that's a red jacket but you know that is like you got you got it oh you know what you are you are a manifested son of god what do you find yourself defeated eh? that's glory to god i went one night and i had a dream oh yes oh you, ooh, i got it i see this i see that See this, that, yeah. Oh, you don't have to believe in dreams. Yes, sir. I certainly do, but dream, don't back up God's word. Then didn't didn't uh, back up God's word. Then it is wrong. 
This is the truth here. Say, uh, stay in this. Yes, sir. Read million to a false bar. Now, now, Pedro. At uh, he inawaletea wandugu kuingia katika kuzaliwa kiongo. Na, ma, na tunatakiwa kuzaliwa katika neno la mungu. Hmm? There is another quote I want to give you concerning this false birth. Let me read it. Let me read it. Uh, 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 paragraph 129 in the message. Uh, you must be born again. The prophet said this. Now, false teachers will bring false birth. At wahubiri ama wa, 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 wachungaji ama waalimu ama wahuduma wa urongo wataleta kuzaliwa kwa uongo two prophets will bring the birth of the word the birth of the word will bring the word the birth of the word Christ lakini wa wa wa, wa manabii wa kweli ama wahubiri wa kweli wachungaji wa kweli wa huduma wa kweli watakuletea neno wataleta kuzaliwa katika neno ambaye ni Kristo false prophets will bring false birth lakini wahubiri wa uongo wataleta kuzaliwa kwa uongo the birth of the churches kuzaliwa kwa makanisa the birth of creeds kuzaliwa kwa makanuni na mafundisho the birth of denomination kuzaliwa kwa madhehebu and here you are Pentecostal brothers false sensation and tell a man that he has a holy ghost because he speak with the tongues i've always seen the devils uh, speak in tongues pencils lay down right in a known tongue that that's not me that mean it's got to be a life by their fruit you know them brother Abraham, do you believe in speaking in tongues yes sir you believe in shouting yes sir to be a christian i believe that i believe uh, god's word but if a life isn't there to back it up force keep enough of the true make form of godliness and listen i'm saying something here i want to listen some kind of false conceptions you know what false conception is read millions of people to force bad teach to force bad false teachers lead people to believe in sensation see that is the thing i wanted to read also nabi anasema ya kwamba shida ya wewe kama ni mbegu kukosa neno hakutakupea kuzaliwa mara ya pili na ikiwa unakuanga kanisani na haujazaliwa mara ya pili na neno bado linahubiriwa kwako kwani ni neno gani unahubiriwa kwa sababu nabii anasema wahubiri wa kweli wa, 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 wa manabii wa kweli wanaleta neno na wanaleta kuzaliwa kwa neno lakini wahubiri wa uongo wanaletaga kuhudungwa mimba kwa urongo na kuzaliwa kwa urongo misisimuko watu wakisema ni sababu niliongea na dimi kwa sababu nilifanya hiki kwa sababu nilipingilika na pia anasema amewahi kuona mashaitani wakiongea na dimi Mape, mapeso ama karamu ya mate ikisimama hivi na kuandika katika lugha ambayo haijasikika na nasema hawa manabii wa uongo wako na ule uwezo wa kuwafanya watu wawe katika mfano wa utaua ama wa uungu wakisema ya kwamba wamezaliwa mara ya pili lakini nabii anasema it is false conception and false conception lead millions of people to false bad false teachers lead people to believe in sensation that is means brethren if you are a true uh, a, a true seed of god what you just need it is a true pulpit with a true man of god which can preach the word of god because the prophet saying here is only a true preacher a true prophet who can bring the word of God, that is the only thing that can give you the true birth of the word of God. The true experience of the, birth of, of the word of God. And that is the reason why then, when we are choosing our local fellowship, now I'm not inciting you against your churches and your pastors, I'm just telling you what the prophet said, that when you are choosing your local fellowship, you must go for a church if you actually... Uh, you are conscious of your eternal destination. Kama wewe unawajibikia ama unafikiria kuhusu maisha yako ya baadaye na mahali ambapo <laughs> utaenda baada ya maisha haya, basi unapofikiria juu ya maisha yako ya, ya usoni. If you are thinking about and you are conscious about your eternal destination, 
and you are thinking of choosing a, a local fellowship or local church with a local preacher in it because it is your local church and your local and your local minister that you totally depend the kind of preaching that is giving to you because what he preaches to you will lead you to final destination if you have a false preacher and it, I can tell you for sure for and for free it is not every preacher that is preaching this message that is a true preacher that take home and take at the bank of your heart not every preacher that is claiming to be preaching this message that is a true preacher sent from God if that would be true that every preacher is a true preacher that comes from God then why do we have all these divisions and why do we have uh, all these denominations that we have in our message churches. The prophets say because we have false preachers and we have false prophets in this message. That is why we are bringing false conception and false paths, false of churches and denominations and divisions among us. Praise the name of living God. That is why we must take care of what we are telling our people. We must be sure that whatever we are telling them is the word of God. Because if we don't tell them the word of God, then uh, that will never help them to receive the true experience of the new birth. That will never help them to receive the new experience, uh, the true experience uh, of the new birth. That is true. One you query, ambayo hakuna mutu ambaye anaweza kupingana nao. Yo sababu lazima unapofikiria kuhusu kuchagua kanisa na nyumbani enda ukachague kanisa ambalo linasimama na ujumbe huu hata kama ni hili letu na unasikia kwamba hatubiri neno hama enda kanisa ambalo linakusaidia pana kukaa katika kanisa ambalo lina, unaona ya kwamba hakuna neno enda uchague kanisa ambalo linahubiri injili yote full gospel that's what the prophet said Kuchagua kanisa la nyumbani si kuchagua tu kikundi. Eh hey, napenda watu hawa wanaogeaga vizuri, wanajua kuongea Kiswahili vizuri na Kizungu vizuri, mahubiri yao ni imesimama. Sio hiyo. Ni kana kwamba wanahubiri neno. The prophet said in the message failures of our victory. In paragraph 12 he said, and many people come into the church and join the church and put their name on the book and doesn't doesn't even consider what the church believes or check up the ch uh, uh, with that church how they preach the word of God or whether they stand for the full gospel or not or just speak out a portion and add a creed floating drifting and never be able to amount anything at wakati mwingi watu wanapokuja na kujiunga na, na kanisa na kuweka majina yao katika vitabu vya kanisa vya makanisa na pasipo uh, kwanza kuuliza kana kwamba kitu kanisa hili kitu kile ambacho wanaamini na kuhakikisha kama kanisa hili linahubiri ukweli na kusimama na ijili yote ama wanachukua tu sehemu uh, ya kanuni ya, ya, ya makanuni ya makanisa na kuanza kuninginia eh? na ku, 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 kuanguka anguka kwa hiyo ambayo haitakusaidia kwa kitu chochote that will never help you in anything it will never help you in anything Yeah? Lazima uangalie lile kanisa ambalo uko ndani yake kama linaweza kuhubiri injili ya eh, injili yote kwa sababu ni injili na kuzaa sio kanisa sio kikundi kile umejiunga nayo sio mhubiri wako sio wasaa wa kanisa sio wale washirika wanao wanao kuwa katika kanisa lenyu ni kama hapo kuna neno la Mungu linahubiriwa kwa sababu neno ndiye anazaa watoto wake waliokuwa ndani yake kwa sababu gani ameweka mhubiri hapo na lazima muhubiri kwanza akutane na Mungu nabii amesema hivyo mara nyingi lazima muhubiri kwanza akutane na Mungu kabla hajaenda mibarani anakutana na Mungu wapi anakutana na Mungu magotini anapozaliwa mara ya pili na kujazwa na Roho Mtakatifu kubatizwa katika mwili wa vipao na kuwekwa awe muhuduma kwa watu wengine until that happen until you meet God you should not go and take any pulpit That is why we have many people the prophet said in the message church ages that invaded the pulpit without a call. They have invaded the pulpit without a call. That is why we must make sure our calling and our election first. So, the prophet is saying here talking about 
choosing a local fellowship. Because it's very important we see, if you are a seed of God, then you need the word of God to be preached to you. Na maandiko katika kitabu cha warumi, cha ulisa hivi. Wataweza kusikia na mnagani kama wajahubiriwa. Wataweza kumuamini mungu na mnagani kama hawajahubiriwa. Wataweza kumuamini mungu na mnagani ambaye hawajawahi kumusikia. Na watamsikia namna gani kama hakuna muhubiri. Na muhubiri atakuenda kwao namna gani kama hajatumwa. Naona? Kwa hivyo lazima tuwe na makanisa yenye wahubiri ambao si kujituma wajituma kazi ya Bwana, bali wametumwa na Mungu kwa ajili ya kuhubiri neno, kwa sababu kuhubiri kwa neno kama vile tutakavyoona ni kumwagia ile mbegu ya Mungu maji. Na maji yanakuaga na uwezo wa kuharakisha ama kuinua ama kuhuisha begu ku, kumea ama kukufa na kufufuka. Oh, the, it is the preaching of the word of God that will bring that death and the bath. As it will take the water to make any seed after it fall on the ground to die and born again. It will take the same, same, same language, spiritually speaking. The preaching of the word of God, the preaching of the word of God is pouring the water upon the seeds that are laying in the lives of the people and the souls of the people. That means they must receive the kind, uh, the right kind of water. And the only kind of water that can make the germs of the seed with the germ of life that are in the lives of the believers or in the souls and in the hearts of the believers is the only true word of God preached to them. That is the, by separation, by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is the only way uh, a ki that kind of a minister can pour the water upon those seeds to die and germinate and come back to life. That is how you can, that is how the experience of the new birth and of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is tied with your pulpit. Your pulpit has some part to pray in order for you to receive the experience of the new birth and of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the true experience. Because the prophet is saying here, don't you joke around with the church that you are in or choosing your local fellowship. Because choosing a local fellowship is very important. Brother Branham liken it like choosing a wife. And you know in the message choosing the bride, the prophet said, before you go to any woman or to any girl, kabla ujamuendea musichana yeyote, ama mwanamuke yeyote ambaye unamudhania na weza kuwa bibi mzuri, omba mungu sana, akuongoze, uende kwa hile mwanamuke ambaye ni kabisa kabisa hameyamuliwa na mungu, alikusudio na mungu kuwa mkeo. Kwa sa ama mumeo, vice versa. Kwa sababu ukionewa na mwanaume ambaye siyo yeye alie kuwa ame mumeo. Utaishi katika shida katika doa yako. Na ulifanya uamuzi, wewe ulifanya uamuzi ni shauli yako. Nabi ya nasema hivyo. Na ukionewa na mwanamuke, ama ukiwa mwanamuke, ambaye hakuwa mukeo. Utaishi katika doa yako na shida. Na hiyo shida si ya kanisa. Hiyo shida ni yako mwenyewe. Kwa sababu wewe haukuomba, haukutafuta mbele ya uso wa Bwana. Ulifikiria kuwa ni kuwa. Ukaenda ukaambia dada na kupenda na kupenda. Tuone enge enge unakaa nyumbani. Shida mtakula nyenyi wenyewe. Na ndio naona ndoa nyingi zinao zinao ndoa nyingi ambao siko saa hii zinafujika za vijana wetu kwa sababu ndoa hizo hazikujengwa juu ya magoti na maombi na kwa kusikia neno na kwa kuongozwa kaneno la Bwana lakini zimejengwa juu ya mitandao wanashidanga wakichati wakichati na simesemi kuchati ni vibaya lakini unachati na nani kwa tika kuchati utaweza kujua mtu namna gani humuoni hauangalii macho yake kama na kudanganya hauoni maisha yake jinsi anavyotambaa anatembea anavyoishi wewe ni kuchati unachati na watu wanaochukuana mitandaoni wanajuana mitandaoni wanaoana wanakuja hapa kwa kwa mhubiri wao kumwambia dugu tulikutana na huyu dugu e, mlikutana wapi hata hatukukutana vi ni tulikutana mitandaoni online eh hey, mnatengeneza manyumba juu ya mitandao mnakutana kwa mitandao badala ya kuomba mpaka Mungu aletee bibi na mabwana mnaenda kwa mitandao kujenga nyumba zenu nayo manyumba ya mitandao itaboromoka tu
Tabia inasema basi kumchagua kanisa na nyumbani ambalo litakulea kiloho ni saa sawa na kumchagua mwanamke ama mume ambaye atakuli, ata, utakaa naye katika ndoa. Ukifanya makosa ni mako, ukichagua makosa basi makosa ni yako, shauri yako. Nabii anasema hivi. Nasema hivi in the message choosing the bride which was preached in 1965 paragraph 51. And if uh, we would study what we are doing then we are going to get married. And when we choose our wife, our husband, if we study it over, a man should pray earnestly for could ruin his entire life. Remember, the vow is until death do we a part. Do we part? And he could ruin his life by making the wrong choice. But if he knows what he is making the wrong choice, and he is marrying a woman that isn't fit to be his wife, and he does he does it anyhow, then it is his fault. If the woman take a husband that knows that he is not fit to be a husband to you, then that is your own fault. After you know what is right and wrong, so you shouldn't go to uh, you shouldn't do it until you are thoroughly pray through. The same applies by choosing a church. Now you must pray over the church that you are fellowshipping in. Remember, church is carry spirit. And now don't uh, you see? Nabi anasema ya kwamba. Tunapochagua bibi na bwana lazima tuwe watu ambao tumeangalia jambo hili na tumelisoma kwa makini sana kwa sababu yaweza kuharibu maisha yetu yote kwa sababu ujue ya kwamba nadhiri za doa ni mpaka kifo kiwatenganishe na mtu anaweza kuchagua makosa achague bibi abaye anajua ya kwamba huyu hanifai kuwa bibi yangu ama uchukue mwanaume ambaye unaona huyu hakufai kuwa bwana yako basi hayo makosa ni yako basi hiyo ni shauri yako kwa sababu wewe ulichagua mwenyewe unaharibu maisha yako yote kwa kufanya chaguo lililo mbaya na unapofanya mambo haya basi unakuwa wewe ndiye ulifanya mambo haya nabii anasema ndipo nasema ya kwamba kila mtu ambaye anafikiria kuoa afaa kuwa mtu ambaye ameomba kabisa vya kutosha na anasema jambo hilo hilo linaenda kwa kuchagua kanisa wakati mtu anapofikiria kuchagua kanisa pana ingia tu kanisa na ninaona waaminio wamesikia ati kanisa hili liko na hili na hili wanaingia huko kanisa na hawajaomba ni kusikia walisikia ya kwamba kunaonekana hii kunaonekana hii kuna uponyaji kuna hiki na hiki na miujiza wanakimbia kwa hiyo makanisa nani anakuambia tunakimbilia miujiza nani anakuambia sisi tunakimbia kuona kama ni kweli kama ni urongo kuna hiyo miujiza miujiza iliamulishwa kufuata wale aaminio amini miujiza ikufuate pana kimbia kutafuta miujiza kwa makanisa ingine na na saa hiyo hata una nafasi ya kuomba Hujaomba o Mungu kama kanisa hili ni la kweli na unafanya kanisa hilo ya kwamba wewe ni mshirika wake na ni kuambia uliabiwa na mtu na ni mtu gani alikuambia hiyo ni kanisa ni mhubiri wako kwa sababu kama si mhubiri wako basi eh, sijui nani mwingine atakwambia because when you are even making these choices you better come to your pastor and tell him lord eh, you, you know pastor i want to move from this church to another if there is a genuine reason to do that why would your pastor deny you to choose a chance of your choice of course the prophet said is your choice nichagua lako la kanisa ambalo unatakiwa kuishi na kukaa nalo na kushiriki nayo si chagua la mchungaji wako ni lako wewe mwenyewe na unapofanya chagua hili nabii anasema watakiwa kuwa umeomba sana kuhusu kanisa hilo remember churches carry spirit ati ukumbuke makanisa yanabeba maroho na kama kanisa halina roho wa Kristo limebeba roho wa shetani. Na nabii anasema, "Now I want you to I, I don't want to be critical, but realize that I'm an old man and I got uh, to live here. And one of these days I've got to answer at the day of the judgment for what I say tonight or any other time. And I therefore got to be uh, dead honest and truly convicted. But you go to the church and if you watch the behavior of that church, you just watch the, uh, the pastor a while and you usually find that the church act like the pastor sometimes. I wonder if the, we just don't get a one another spirit instead of the holy spirit you get to a place where a pastor is a little radical and carrying on and you find out the congregation is the same way and I'll, I'll bring you uh, to a church where i see a pastor standing jack their heads back and forth and you watch the congregation they do the same you take a pastor just grab up down anything usually the church will do the same thing if i was choosing a church i would choose a genuine fundamental full gospel bible church i was choosing one and put to my family in choose 
Hati nabia nasema, makanisa ya nabeba maroho. Unaweza kuona kanisa ambalo, eh, eh, ambalo, mchunga, mimi sitaki, eh, kanisa ambalo, muhubiri wake, anajiedesha kwa jia hii ama hile ingine, unaona wa shirika wale, wana, wanajiedesha eh, kama mchungaji wao. Na badala ya kuwa na roho wa kristo, wanakuwa na roho wa mchungaji wao. Na nabia nasema, ati pengine mchungaji anainua anga kichu, anamuna hii, Sijui ana, ana, anafanya na muna hii na vile Anafanya nguwa hii na hile ingine Unaona ya kwamba kanisa badala ya kuwa na roho mtakatifu Wanakuwa na roho wa kristo Basi ni kusema Ikiwa mchungaji Hana roho mtakatifu na hajazaliwa mara ya pili Ni vigumu sana huyo mchungaji Akarete kanisa lake ambalo wana mungu wa kuhudumia Chini ya ujuzi wa kweli Wakubatiswa kwa roho mtakatifu Na kuzaliwa mara ya pili Kwa sababu ngo yeye mwenyewe hajawai pata Atakupa na mna gani? Kile yeye hana. Kuhubiri tunahubiri yale ambao tunepewa na mungu. Kile haujapewa na mungu utahubiri na mna gani? Utahubiri chako. Na ukipiri chako, hiso chicha mungu. Na kama chicha mungu, kitareta mbegu yako. Na watu hao utazaa, wanaka kama wewe. Ndiyo naona, muhubiri akiwa mwenye kiburi. Na muhubiri akiwa mwenye kiburi. Waaminiwa wa, wa, wa makanisa hili wanakuwa wenye viburi. Mubiri ya kiwa ni mutu ambaye hawezi kueshimu watu gaji wengine, hawezi kueshimu makanisa higine, unaona wa shirika ambaye wanazaa, hawana, hawana heshima juu ya wahubiri wengine wa makanisa higine, hata hawana heshima juu ya wa shirika wengine. Wanasema hawa amini, hawa Mubiri akionyesha kanisa lake, kanisa letu ndiyo tu liko na ukweli, sisi ndiyo tu na ujua ujumbe, makanisa higine, hawa, huyo ni nani, unasema nani, mubiri gani, kanisa gani, anetoka kanisa gani? You see the same same people doing the same in the members of the church doing as they are pastors. That is why pastors we must be. We must take care. Because we will be responsible before God of what we are telling our members. Nabia nasema wanachukua roho za wachungaji kuliko kuchukua roho mtakatifu. Na nabia nasema kama mimi nilikuwa na chagua kanisa na kupeleka familia yangu ningechukua kanisa na ukweli lenye msingi ya injili yote ya neno la Mungu kanisa la kibibilia hilo ndilo ningechagua na hapo ndipo ndipo ningepeleka familia yangu lazima tukaweze kujua hivyo kwa sababu lazima uchague kanisa ambalo lina ule uwezo lina ule uwezo wa kuhubiri neno uchague kanisa ambalo Lina muhubiri ambaye ana ule mkate wa uzima wa milele kwa sababu kan hana uzima hana mkate basi wewe sijui basi umechagua kanisa ina gani kwa sababu you are supposed to choose a church uh, 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 which, which, which has the bread of life which have a pastor with the bread of uh, bread of life for the children because kama hauna kanisa kama hilo basi basi sijui itakuwa namna gani kwako Sakiwa kuwa na kanisa ambalo liko na muhubiri napomalizia liko na muhubiri sababu tunachimba tumeweka msingi hii tukimaliza kuweka msingi tutaangalia ujuzi huo wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili lakini tumeangalia lazima kuwe na mbegu na ni lazima kuwe na maji ili mbegu hii ikaweze kuchipuza ile mbegu lazima iwe mbegu ya kweli nabia nasema katika ujumbe huu ambao unaitwa the pagamian church age which was preached in 1960s. Nabia nasema in paragraph 303. Hidden manner. Let us give the interpretation the best we can. What does hidden manner type? Hidden manner was a manner that was kept in a priest or shubret. In the Bible, that was only for the priest. How many knows around now? It wasn't for... They had a bread for the... They had a bread for the congregation. But there was a special bread for the priest. Unaona? Ati... Mana iliyofichwa wacha tukapeane tafsiri yake kama vile tunavyojua kueleza unaona mana ile iliyokuwa inawekwa pale ule mkate ambao ulikuwa umewekwa katika biblia nasema kulikuwa na mkate wa wale makuhani ambao ni yale mana nabii anasema ya kwamba eh, kuna kuna mkate ulikuwa wa kusanyiko na kuna mkate maalum eh, ule ulikuwa unapewa makuhani peke yake this is a special bread a special bread he hidden man na huo ulikuwa ni mkate maalum na huo ulikuwa ni yale mana yalikuwa yamefichwa pale what is it who is our mana christ ati ilikuwa ni nini maana yetu ni nini ni kristo 
eh, Saint John, the sixth chapter, forty-eight, the fiftieth verse. Now, if you are get, if you are putting it down, Jesus said, "Ah, uh, he was the bread of life that came from God out of heaven." The man. Ati kama unaandika Yohana 6 mstari wa 48 hamsini inasema nini ya kwamba Yesu Kristo alisema mimi ndiye mkate wa uzima uliotoka binguni yale mana. well what is the hidden manna the manna isn't given to all the congregation the revelation is poured upon the angel of the church and you know the angel of your church is your pastor ati unaona hiyo manna ni nini ili ni ule ufunuo Na ufunuo haupeani kwa kusanyiko bali ufunuo unamwagwa kwa malaika wa kanisa na malaika wa kanisa kila malaika wa kanisa ako na ufunuo the revelation of the word see revelation of the word is given to the angel of that church for it is hidden from anywhere and revealed back the hidden man ati ufunuo huo wa neno la Bwana wapeanwa kwa kila malaika wa kanisa ama kwa kila mchungaji wa kanisa na inafichwa mahali pengine pote na inafunuliwa kwa huyo malaika it is addressed to the angel of the church na ina, inapeanwa tu kwa ule malaika wa kanisa ambaye tunajua ni wachungaji you get it it is a little bigger revelation what Christ is maybe a little higher call ati mchungaji wako Mungu anampeanga ufunuo mkubwa kuliko wewe ulio nao ukiwa mshirika kwa sababu yeye akiwa mhubiri ana mwito mkubwa kuliko yule ambao wewe uko nayo the hidden man a little something special what is it special not something the blessing of the holy ghost oh no for the whole congregation but the hidden man was a special revelation cause he had to teach others Ate hii special man ama mkate huu ni nini ya kwamba ni baraka za kiroho nabii anasema hapana ni nini ya kwamba kwa kusanyiko lote kwa sababu huyu mchungaji amepewa ufunuo kwa ajili ya kufundisha hawa wengine ako na mwito mkubwa lazima angepewa ufunuo that is why the prophet say you will never know more than your pastor you cannot live higher than your pastor because god must take care of the offices that are ministering the word of god he must protect them he must guard them because it is his offices so the prophet is saying here cause he had to teach others was a little more knowledge of the scripture that's what uh, he could teach others he is supposed to be all right you never live any higher than your pastor you must remember that see because he is the shepherd that feeds you if he is the shepherd he got to know where the manna is to feed the sheep that's right little special and watch this just a minute a revelation the hidden man unaona at akona kila mchungaji akona ufunuo maalum kwa ajili amepewa na Mungu kama maana kwa ajili ya kufundisha wengine anakona kusanyiko la kuwapea hayo ndiyo maana ambayo amefichwa kwa sababu yeye ni mchungaji amepewa na kwa sababu yeye ako na kondoo wa kulisha amepewa hiyo Mwa kwa sababu yeye ni mchungaji ili akaweze kulisha kondoo kwa hivyo ndugu dada napomalizia yaweza kuwa shida yako ni mibara na mpaka usuluhishe jambo hilo la mibara uwe katika chini ya mibara ambaye itakuhubiria neno la Mungu la kweli ujuzi huu tunaongelea ujuzi wa kweli wa kubatizwa mara ya pili na kujaza na mtakatifu hautawahi kuupata Mungu akubariki hebuni tukaweze kuomba baba wetu wa mbinguni katika jina la Yesu Kristo tushajua ya kwamba Bwana kama tulikuwa mbegu zako ziliyokuwa ndani yako kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya dunia Bwana tuna uwezo katika uh, maisha yetu ya kuweza kuishi na Roho Mtakatifu tukaupate huu ujuzi wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili. Na kwa hivyo Bwana wetu wa mbinguni ikiwa sisi tulikuwa mbegu zako ambazo zilikuwa ndani yako kabla ya kuwekwa misingi ya dunia na ukaweka chembe chembe ya uzima wa milele ndani ya nafsi zetu basi ni kusema tukipata neno tukipata umahubiri ya kweli tukipata injili yote basi tutaweza kumwagikiwa na maji yatayofanya mbegu hiyo kufa na kufufuka katika upya wa uzima wa milele na basi bwana wetu wa mbinguni tunapoona jambo hilo linatoka pale mibarani kwenda kiti cha nyuma naomba kwa ajili na simama pengoni kwa ajili ya kila ndugu kila, kila ndugu mhubiri ambaye anahubiri ujumbe huu pasipo kujali bwana tofauti tulio nayo na miganyiko tulio nayo makanisani mwetu lakini bwana nikiwa mhubiri kama wale wengine naombea wahubiri wote ya kwamba bwana utatupea umoja wa ufunuo kwa sababu ni katika umoja huo 
ambapo utaleta makanisa yetu katika umoja wa imani, umoja wa roho moja, umoja wa Mungu mmoja na umoja wa ubatizo mmoja. Na hiyo itamaliza migawanyiko ambayo imewekwa na sisi wahubiri. Bwana utukumbuke na utusamehe makosa hayo ambayo tumefanya ya kuwaganya wa, 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 wa mashirika yetu kanuni za mafundisho na imani. Tusaidie Bwana yetu wa mbinguni ya kwamba tutapata kabisa kabisa mawazo yaliyokuwa ndani ya Yesu Kristo, ufunuo wa kweli wa neno hili kwa sababu tukihubiri hivyo na ufunuo wa kweli na tafsiri ya kweli, Bwana na kila muhuduma kila mahali katika vitongoji vyote vya dunia amefanya hivyo kwa mwito wako basi tutaleta kanisa lako katika kukamilifu wa kuweza kutwaliwa katika unyakuzi tutaleta kanisa lako katika imani moja katika roho moja katika bwana mmoja na katika uh, uh, Mungu uh, na katika uh, imani moja bwana wetu wa mbinguni utusaidie kwa sababu hiyo ndio njia ya kipekee mbegu za Mungu zinaweza kuzaliwa mara ya pili na kupata ujuzi wa kweli wa ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu Bwana kama kuna wandugu na wadada ambao hajapata ujuzi huu naomba Bwana ya kwamba kama walikuwa mbegu za Mungu Bwana waanze uh, Mungu wa majeshi kupata nguvu za kuzaliwa mara ya pili kupata vituko vya kuzaliwa mara ya pili kupata vituko kwa wale ambao wamezaliwa mara ya pili vya kujaza na wako mtakatifu lijarie jambo hilo Bwana wetu wa mbinguni Bwana tunaomba utusaidie tunapokutazamia kwa jambo hilo endelea kuwalinda watakatifu hao endelea kuwahifadhi chini ya neema yako endelea kuwabariki na mambo ya kiroho na ya mambo ya kimwili wakati maisha yako magumu kwa sababu ya ugonjwa ulioko katika dunia wabariki wadugu na wadada hawa ulituahidi utakuwa pamoja nasi mpaka mwisho wa dhahari naomba wape haja za mioyo yao lijalie jambo hilo ndio maombi yetu katika jina la Bwana Yesu Kristo tunaomba na kuamini and the church say amen god bless you na neno litaendelea